At top of the morning to you. Hey, I'm Michael, or as the grandkids call me Roo. Welcome to Roo Doodles Live. Hey, here's where I sit and paint for the next 58 to 59, maybe even 60 minutes plus, and um, just carry on a conversation, tell a few stories, put down some watercolor. Don't teach you, but encourage you to do the same. So I want to say hello to a few people here, and then I'll jump to the desk. Thank you for jumping on board already this morning. Wow, bunch of you lined up. Thank you for being here. Um, it's the fourth. Uh, it's the happy fourth weekend coming up today, Friday the third. Yeah, that sounds like a good day, huh? So, hope you got a, a safe weekend planned. I hope you got something fun planned. Hope you have some family that you can uh, hang out with. Wouldn't that be awesome? Do that a little bit. Um, anyway, let me uh, let me clear up a couple things here this morning. Just get them out of my way so I can see what's going on. And then I'll say um, howdy to the rest of you. Well, that's funny. It just popped up, Alex. Howdy to you, too. <laughs> I got a button somewhere that says howdy. I think Dale Moody actually may have printed that. Howdy. Uh, it was a camp button years ago. So um, so here we go. Mary Jones, thank you. Happy third, fourth, or whatever it is. Let's paint. Yeah, it, does, it doesn't matter, right? It's the third or the fourth. So, Mary, um, I know you're painting along, and I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for you who are uh, sending me little notes, but also saying, you know, it's been many years since I pulled out some art supplies and said, I can do this. You can do this. You can do this. You need to be doing something. Find something to get these God-given hands moving on something fun, whether it's, uh, hey, take up whittling, okay? My uh, my calendar just went off and told me, hey, you didn't turn the calendar off. Thank you very much for that. Okay, Skeeter Powell, good to see you this morning, buddy. Glad you're here. There's my calendar. See, I spoke and it showed up. What's the matter with you today? Okay, get out of there. So glad you're here. Lisa Haymaker, hello. Cheryl Ann Coat Wallace, glad you're here. And Cheryl Ann Coat, if you ever watch, I'm, I'm glad you're here too. Uh, Patricia, thank you very much. And um, all those uh, um, emojis that you threw on there, it looks like the whole chicken family hatching out. I think you got it lined up there. Judy, <clears throat> time to rise and shine with Rue. And once again, Alex Howdy, Christine Green, thank you. Good morning, Rue Doodles. I think that's what GM stands for. I thought it was General Motors because I have a couple, uh, have some old trucks in the past. Carol Williams, good morning to you. Kim Sheets, Peggy uh, Holcomb, hello. Hey, Bonnie, from, Kai from North Carolina. A new name I think just popped up. I might have missed you. Sometimes these just get scrambled. So, Bonnie, welcome to the Roo Doodles Live. This is what I do. I tell stories I paint sometimes. And Terry Tardy, I'll stop right there on your name and shift to the desk. Let's do it right here because you've been uh, hiding out with me for, you got it. Look at this. Going to grab the old Lammy pen here, Lammy fountain pen. Here it is right here. I'm going to take this one up this way also. I know that's not uh, hard. It's hard for you right-handed people since I'm right-handed, or hard for you left-handed people to see this, 90 days right there, 90 days. Oh my gosh, 10 days to go. So if I paint tomorrow, which I may, could be on the road, just on a short little jaunt to see a sun. But uh, if I paint tomorrow, it'll be uh, seven, and yeah, thank you for correcting me yesterday, seven, three was 90. So seven, four would be 91 days. I'm getting close to my 100 days. There it is right there. 100 days is what I've been shooting for. And, you know, that only started about 30 into this, 40 into this. I said, somebody said, how long have you been doing this? Or how long are you going to do this? And I go, I have no idea. I'm making this up on the on the fly. But I am getting ready to paint me a new B because I think this one is getting a little road weary. At 100 days, I'm going to retire this B. He will have carried um, the pollinization. Whoa. Man, we can make a poem out of that, huh? He will have carried the uh, pollinization to you guys. All right. Is my face clean? I'll get rid of my napkin on my shoulder. There it is. All right. Um, you know, I, I work at this desk. I eat at this desk. I live at this desk. I'm, I'm at this desk. You want to know what it's like to be on the other side of the baby? 91 days live. It's right here. You go like, are you going to leave the desk? Not today. I'm glued to the chair. Hope you get your coffee and your tea and let's get moving. But I'm going to paint another B at some point in time today. I sketched him out there last night, just uh, maybe yesterday some, just a little bit of pencil. You asked me yesterday what kind of pencil I use. In this case, um, I had the Murado Black Warriors. I had Ticonderoga, uh, a good wooden pencil. But I do have a little mechanical pencil that lays on the desk, and it's uh, 0.5. So it's a tiny little pencil that sometimes I'll just sketch light things with. 
and do that. Keep a little racer around. These are tri-tip, um, general tri-tips. I think you get them at Michael's or somewhere. Don't, don't pay a lot for erasers. I like this eraser, the gray one, as opposed to the pink ladies. Uh, it, it's not what you get. It's what you like. Do you hear me? So I'll just tell you what I use. And then that way, when you go in the art store, you'll see two or three types. Hey, a racer costs a buck 79. So buy two different types and try them out and then throw one at the squirrel is he up in your bird feeder. Okay. So Bonnie, hello to you. Crystal. Hello, Pat Hahn. Welcome. Terry Tardy. I stopped on your name. Deep Burroughs. Good morning to you, my friend from up just the road, about 45 minutes from me. I pray you're well and uh, moving along. You got to be kidding me, Alex. You still have your Howdy button from Wendy Gap, 1978. Unbelievable, man. I'll dig mine up one day. I don't think it's up here. I think it's on my art bar desk, and I'll put it on just, just for fun. That's pretty amazing, okay? What great memories you hold on stuff like that. I held on mine for a long time. Mine used to be on, uh, this will ring a bell with you and nobody else, but the Humpty Dumpty. It was on a thing of Humpty Dumpty we had for the Dumpty Awards those guys used to do. Jamie Campbell, hi from Oklahoma. Oh, Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plain. Yeah, it's crazy Friday, isn't it? Sherry Craven, glad to have you on the show. Hope Wade, you are inspiring. I don't know what you're getting ready to say here, but I'm going to read the rest of this. Going to pull up my watercolors later today. Fantastic. Yank, those things should not be stored underneath the bed or in the bottom of the armoire. There's a word for you. All right, I'm going to stop right there and paint something, and then I'll come back uh, to you. For those of you who are just joining me, by the way, did you see the little uh, bumper that I ran? It was this painting right here. It was called the Tiny Parade. I did this yesterday, and I'm telling you what, um, you would think that I uh, it was the Grand Sweeps giveaway because people said, oh my gosh, I want that painting, I want that painting. So I sat down and I did several of them last night, and they are gone um, for some people who asked, but it's just this little painting, and I wanted to put him in a blue vest. And um, I think it has to have some white buttons on it, you know. Um, and so I'm going to put some little white buttons here on this vest. Maybe a little pocket there. And uh, a couple streaks of this white pen that I use every now and then. It's also what I made the stars with. So there's there's the little uh, tiny parade. And I only signed it. I didn't put a label on it. It is red, white, and blue. You, you know where that's going. So that's the painting that I did the little time-lapse bumper bumper on last night excuse me my tea didn't settle so i did a few of those and they're uh they're going to be off later and running somewhere all right for those of you who are just joining me and um hey ash good to see you my friend christina welcome karen Lindsay. hello to you miss carla glad to have you on miss carla you've been taking a long ride with me here you're like terry tardy you've been around lee petkus books went out yesterday boom i think i mailed 15 of my books yesterday, the Roo Doodle book. Um, hey, Roo, what's a wheelbarrow? So thank you for thank you guys for buying my book and sharing my book. And by the way, uh, this is a commercial uh, for the book, If for those of you who have bought the book. So not that I'm pressing you to buy the book. Here's the thing. If you got kids or grandkids, uh, if you go to RooDoodles.com, RooDoodles.com, um, boom. Um, there's uh, that's the wheelbarrow that I painted in the book. I literally used that as a model. There is a um, a download. You can download it on your phone, your tablet, even your computer. It's a free download of audio with some production music in it. With I came in the studio with my kid, grandkids, all six of them, and I had them read the parts. And so uh, I, I sort of narrate it, and then they go, "Hey, Rue, what's a wheelbarrow?" And so it's different. And the little grasshopper has. Uh, my little granddaughter, the youngest one, got to be the voice of the grasshopper. So there's a voice, and it's put together. So please read to your kids out loud. But after you've read it six or seven, eight times, or 20, then if you want them to read it on their own, you can start the little um, audio, and they can turn in the actual book. And when the rooster crows, you turn the page, and that's how they can keep up and read along. Learn some words. Learning words is good. And that's where I am this morning. Let's go right here. This is my book I sometimes paint out of. Weird and wonderful words. There it is right there. Uh, haven't heard back from McKean yet. <laughs> I'm going to keep sending her notes. And one of these days, she's going to say, would you stop sending me notes? You're stalking me. Um, I, I, I did find a word in here. So for those of you who don't know about the book and you just joined me, uh, and the book's filling up, I just found a book that had lots of weird and, uh, what is it, wonderful words in it. And I'll read the definition of the word, and then I'll think, 
what does that make me think of and what that what I paint? I paint roosters. I paint whimsical roosters. I paint zany roosters. I paint roosters that reflect our life a little bit. I'm not a fine artist. I'm more of an illustrative doodler. That's why I rue doodles. That's where the name came from. The concept is this. They, to me, are storytelling fodder, okay? They build up the way that I move into a story. Like you might use a character that you had, or you might use a, uh, you might use a character. Or my friend who's on here this morning, he and I used to story tell together, still do actually on the phone lots. And uh, he uses a character that we came up with years ago. And when I hear that character's name, I think of him creating some embellished folklore story. And I know he's going to wind me around and tell me something, but he's generally going to get around to a point. My point is be creative. However, you can get it to come into your system and give it to other people. That's what this show is about. This and coming together with some great art supplies and needs, things that you might need. And so I'm hopefully I'm helping steer you there a little bit. So I just turn the page, I find a word, and I go, okay, that sounds like this. Let me paint it. You know, that's that's just uh, uh, notiny, well maturing, especially in characteristics. Uh, the word that comes from meaning to extend the young, okay? Playful, be playful. So I still have a gyroscope here. Remember those are the things you pulled and spun around and it balanced on? I showed it to my grandson the other day. He's 12. He goes, I've never seen one of those. I'm going like, well, this is what you could buy in the back of comic books when I was, you know, for 25 cents, you ordered this thing in, or you got it at Woolworths, five and dime, a gyroscope. Wow. In fact, it's over there on the shelf. I'll pull it out one day and crank it up. So here we go. So I saw a word in here. Now I've gone past it. I had it marked. Here it is right here. And I took a little purple Sharpie and, um, and I just painted this. Let me get my big old head out of the way here just a little bit. It's just a little bit in the way. There we go. Yeah, you need to see the painting and not the painter. Listen to this. Boom, that's a heavy mug. Okay. Here we go. So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to take the paint that I use. These are a palette of paints. Even though it's in a Van Gogh or Van Gogh, depending on what part of France you come from. Uh, Europe, you come from Van Gogh. It's a, it's this box because I like the size of this, and also this was a gift to, to me from uh, my uh, brother law, my brother in law, and his wife who came back from France and brought me this. And I used up the colors. I still still keep a couple Van Gogh colors in here, but mostly I fill these with paints that I normally use. A very bold palette. I use American Journey paints from uh, from Cheap Joe's art stuff. I just like them. I started using them early on, and I stayed with them. Uh, and so I've gotten to know them a little bit like an old friend. And um, I feel like the company's an old friend. So that's kind of how I feel this. I'm taking a spray bottle here and I'm just spraying a little bit on the paint pan like this, moistening it up a little bit. My brush has to work less. And there we go. Look at that. See, and there's shimmering a little bit there. And I just sort of set that aside and let it do its thing. Um, I use a lot of regular um, watercolor brushes. Anywhere from threes to sixes. This is a this is a one or a zero. This is an eight, I think. All the ba basically all the labels have worn off. Can you see? And that's from banging it on the side of the jar, and I'll break the paint. But today I'm going to paint with this. Uh, I'm going to paint with this bamboo brush, and I've got two of them here. One of them has been dipped in water. The other one has not. Watch this when I dip it in the water. And I didn't really clean my water out from yesterday, so it's a nice color of a old coffee. All right, so I'm just going to go in here, and I'm just going to start, uh, start and, and these are not supposed to be detailed. They're supposed to be very loose. That's why I'm using a bigger brush than the painting. I'm just kind of going in there and sweeping some of this in and making it happen. The word I found is right here. The word is draft sack, D-R-A-F-F-S-A-C-K, draft sack, draft sack. That's not a bag you hang behind a workhorse, see? So I thought, what does it sound like to me? What is it? And I think it's a bag of something that's, you know, what what is it you're pulling behind you? And it's a bag of garbage <laughs> or a bag or a paunch or a big belly. And I thought, oh, draft is a meaning of dregs or swill. So it's it's just like you, you get up from the table. It's how I felt last night when my wife and I couldn't decide what was for dinner. And, and I said, you know what? I know what we need. We need a little bit, maybe a couple of ribs and some brisket. So I ran down to our favorite. I didn't want to build a fire and cook anything and. It's too hot for that outside, so I ran down to our favorite barbecue place, and because um, they have Henry Weinhard root beer, Henry Weinhard, Henry Weinhard, okay, 
look it up. It comes from California. I think I actually traded a painting one time for uh, a case of Henry Weinhardt root beer. And it was shipped in from, uh, at that time, it was shipped from California into Houston and then back to me from somewhere else. But it made me, uh, me kind of laugh. Um, Henry Weinhardt. But I went to, and I went and got us some. But after I ate um, about 12 little hush puppies and then uh, everything else that I wanted, I went, I, I feel a little bit like a, my, my stomach's like a draft sack. It's just like, I feel like, what, what's the matter with me? Why did, I, why did I do this? Now I need to go walk. And I'm thinking, no, it's still 85 degrees outside. And so uh, I came up here and I painted. And guess what? How many calories do I burn while I'm doing this? Uh, mentally, a ton, I'll tell you that. Okay, so, so this is a draft sack. And so what happens is I'm just sort of, um, what I need to do probably is paint over on the side to make this really work. I'm going to paint a little bottle over here like this. Yeah, and it's got a label on it, and you know what's coming here, right? You know this is going to be, it's going to be this color right here. There it is right there. That's the bottle you were expecting. Like, oh, uh, where's my, uh, that's the ugliest color stuff, the Pepto-Bismol there. There's what he needs right there. Maybe his arm is reaching out here to uh, to grab it. So I'll just make these paintings up as I go. And uh, that's, that's the evening toast you have right there after you, uh, you feel like a draft sack. Okay, so this, this of course, is just a, a, a worthless little painting, except the fact that um, it makes me remember this word, and I'll probably use that word in storytelling somewhere, and now I have an image of it. Plus, I also allowed my mind and my brush to be free and creative and just come up with something. So that's why I do stuff like this, okay? So this was a stumbled-on deal by watching another artist. One time I watched a documentary on this artist who traveled on the subway, and he sketched on these little pads just tiny little pads. He would just take a little pad like this and he would look at people on the subway and he would just do these great little gesture sketches. And so I would just be so impressed by how he would just watch what they were doing. Were they reading the newspaper? Uh, they were cartoonish like. And um, I, I watched this gesture sketch and maybe this guy was reading a book and, uh, Maybe he's sitting on a park bench or on the subway bench and, and there's a bar hanging down with a loop. And there you go. And so this guy would just grab that and he would grab his brush and then he would just go in and start to work the colors in. He had an old brown hat on and um, he had this uh, he had this dingy gray suit that he wore on the subway every day. And uh, so I watched him paint a little bit and I thought, I know exactly where this guy's going. I, I know where I know I know this guy, and then I go. Sometimes that guy's me. Put a little touch there. Maybe he's reading. It's where I get a little bit of my turquoise in. He's reading this turquoise book, and everything else is sort of brown. This this is uh, everything in the subway is gray, gray green. You know, just like uh, all right. So I watched him do that, and as the camera pans over his desk, I see this book on his desk, or it wasn't a book. It was actually pages from a book. He just ripped out these pages. And over the actual writing, he had done some of these little sketches like this. He had just painted that. And I went, I should do that with Ruse and just see what comes to mind. And believe it or not, 25 cents in a sale. Um, sorry. Um, what's her name? I, sh I should get her name right. It's probably why she's not answering my emails. Um, oh, well. You have to look her up. I just forgot her name. Aaron. Aaron McKean. So, Aaron, I couldn't remember your name all of a sudden. So, um, um, Aaron McKean's book was over there and I just bought it because I like words. I like poetry. I like songs. I like stories. I like putting words together. So there we go. That's how I warm up in the mornings. Those of you who want to come and see me warm up some, that's how to do it. It's day 91. No, it's day. Is it day 90? It's day 90. There it is. Day 90. Day 90. And I'm painting. See, I can't even remember. Judy, welcome. Yvonne, um, Leah said hello to you. Kim Sheets, 10 more days we need to prepare for withdrawal. <laughs> well, I don't know what I'm going to do at day 100, but I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something creative, okay? And I've got some friends who've emailed me about day 100 already who said, hey, have you thought about this? Have you thought about this? Or could we do this? Or I may take a couple of days off and just go, let the brushes rest, and then I'm going to do something else. I don't know. Morning, Margaret. Welcome, Carol. Uh, Love the bees. Thank you very much. What about your kneaded racer? Uh, what about kneaded racers? I, they feel like Play-Doh, and I find myself, because I'm fast brain, which is the what we call for those people who are like me, ADD, ADHD, 
you don't say that. It, it's disheartening when you tell a child that they have something that may be wrong with them. You say, no, 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 you have a fast brain. Thank you, Dr. Jim Poole, for that. Dr. Jim Poole wrote a book called Flipping ADHD on Its Head. I helped with the projects on that uh, for, for a year and a half with him in Raleigh. So I use a racer that's called a general tri-tip just because I like to turn it I like the way it feels. Needed racers are like silly putty to me, but if you like them and you like the way they feel, use them. Here's the thing. I'm not telling you what to use. I'm telling you just use something. In fact, most of the time I use I sketch with pen. Boy, you never sleep, did you? Not too much. Jamie, thank you for loving the videos. I appreciate you being on board watching. Deborah Belinda, um, <laughs> get the chase what you like, including erasers. <laughs> 179 is a steal. Where else can you buy anything? You can't even buy an egg muffin from 179. Uh, yes, Skeeter, your books are in transit. They're coming, man. And there's a couple paintings down in there that I did for the kids of uh, uh, David's Table. And by the way, some of our dear Ruse Crew friends have sent you some money for art supplies for them. So that's all coming to you. What a great community, okay? You guys have become. Um, all right, Yvonne, get out of the yard and come help, okay? Uh, hey, D, hey D, thank you for being here. Bought book with intent to practice making Ruse because I love roosters. And here's the thing. When you're getting ready to paint, paint what you love, okay? Don't paint something because I'm painting it. But if my roosters help you loosen up and paint flowers or butterflies or cats or dogs or landscapes or uh, still life, pears, everybody wants to paint a pear, paint a few pears. Good to learn that shape, that shade. If, if, that, if my work and my encouragement frees you up to do that, have at it. That's what this show is all about, okay? So here we go. So I'm gonna do a um, I'm gonna do one of my one of my paintings that I love to do from time to time is a big old Roo. He's stretching out his head. He's got that look in his eye. He's sort of like this. Here he is right here. No no eraser needed on this one. His neck's all stretched out. He's a little raucous shaped. Um, he's got this foot up. Toes are huge. He's coming down like this. This foot over here is coming down. And it's firmly planted on the soil. We'll show you that soil later. We, I got a rat in my pocket this morning, I guess. I'm talking like I'm a fifth grade teacher in um, Zimmerman High School or uh, elementary school. There's the ground he's standing on. I told you it was coming. All right, so I'm going to let that alone right there. So let me move this over so you can see the whole painting. I think you got it in right there. Boom. All right. There's probably more over here I can't see for this. Caroline, good morning. Crystal, thank you. Your copy is in the mail. Uh, the new Van Gogh palette only has 12 pans. I hate it when that happens, okay? But, hey, I only use about six colors anyway, so just get the six that you love and make everything else out. S sometimes when I'm working with little kids and um, and grown-ups who need to learn how to paint, <laughs> don't be offended if you're older than children. Um, I just say use three colors. Use, uh, In fact, that's all I'm going to use this morning. Right here they are, three colors. Boom. Boom and boom. And there may be, I've got to replace these. I think I might can squeak some colors out of these. And what I'm going to use this morning is uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydrus Fine Art Watercolor. Pick these up at the local art store, uh, Cheap Joe's. Uh, these are non American Journey paints, which I use his in my pans. And I buy them in tubes like so. I buy those in little tubes, and then I squeeze those tubes into my pans, and that's how I run, except when I'm off and heading up to put my uh, bug out bag together, and I squeeze those into little containers like this, and there's my six pans in there, but I've also added a turquoise and an orange and a little uh, French gray, okay? Alex, you're right. It's not Sag Harbor anymore. It's French gray, and uh, so those are my colors that I'll travel with in my little pan. And uh, I'm throwing that down there in my bag, my bailout bag, bailout bag, B-A-I-L or bug out, whichever one you want to use. Okay, here we go. So let's paint. I've talked enough. A little, a little yellow here, a little yellow coming down in here like this. Um, a little, get a little red right in here, a little red up here. That's probably enough to do that. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be tight. But I think we can make it work. Okay, there's a little red over here. I like a little red in the body. I'm going to need a little more yellow to make this thing fly a little bit. And I may, I may cheat and use a little black color. I'll put a little more yellow in there. Uh, see if I can get some blue out of this one here. So 
You know what's missing? I'll tell you what's missing. Some music's missing. Where's my music this morning? Wow, see, I am fast brain. Boy, just get that out of the way for a second. I was going to add something to the orchestra this morning. Here we go, right here. I was going to add um, a man in a derby over here um, in remembrance of my uh, my friend, John Hartford, who was a clogging fiddle player. Oh, my gosh, was he ever. man would put a piece of plywood down on the floor and uh, take off. You know how orchestras sometimes invite in a special player, you know, because they they uh, they bring somebody in that just brings a little more oomph to the orchestra. Um, so that would be Hartford in this case. Use that eraser just a little bit there. Remember, I'm just painting on a piece of cardboard. I don't know what I ripped this off of. You see where it's glued down to something. I think it was the back of, oh, I think this. I know exactly what it was. This was the back of one of my uh, painting cards. Yeah, one of my painting blocks. It's like right here. This block right here, you don't throw it away, just keep it. So it had the white uh, plug on the back. Okay, there it is. Sippy dee. Or a little brown derby or a little black derby most of the time. What makes this guy different is that everybody else in the orchestra is in their uh, in their black tux, and he comes in, and Hartford uh, made sure his socks never matched. <laughs> so he'd have one uh, gray one and one brown one. He did. He was an interesting dude, man. Okay. All right, there's our orchestra. I added him right there. See, this is just a gesture painting. All right, now I can paint. Run deep, run rarely, a river run long and dry. I'm gone with steamboat, you know, big run beer, just skipping in the Mississippi, dude. <sighs> Followed Hartford since the 70s. Uh-oh, just going to have to pour it. Am I using blue? Yeah, I think that's blue. We'll just pour some of this out here because I'm almost out of that. Whoa, that's enough paint for 17 paintings right there. Let's just get some of that out of here right now. woo hoo That is a lot of paint. So I'm just going to take some of this and pull some out. That ought to do it. Now watch, I'll, I'll be asking for more in a minute. Let me put this somewhere safe, like in my trash can over here. I actually have one. All right, big brush, and let's just make some noise here, all right? Uh, let me go in and just start putting some water in the painting, which sometimes I'll start with water. Watch this. I'm just going to sort of start sweeping this through here and let it go. Now, when you see paint run like this, you know what it's doing. It's chasing the water, okay? Now, the green, yellow, and blue are going to come in from mixing these together. Tell me music doesn't help you paint. Look at that. It makes me loose. I'm holding this bamboo brush in the middle, and I'm just swinging across here. Skeeter, just buy those little spray bottles at uh, Trader Joe's. They have those too. Or, yeah, the eyeglass cleaner. So there you go. Judy's got a great idea for you. A little spray bottle from eyeglass cleaner. That works well too. Uh, just go to Home Depot and buy one of those great old big ones And if you're painting something on the barn too. Uh, hey, I'm late. Trish Brown, you're never late. Uh, Linda, thank you for being here this morning. Patricia Grace Coomer. What is the brand of watercolors and where's the best place to get them? Sounds like a commercial coming up. Hey, I don't know the best place, but I know the place that I get them. How's that for an answer? I can't tell you the best place because maybe I could, um, but the best place would have to say, hey, uh, you you tell them the best place. And, and uh, But here's here's what I think. I think that my colors are American Journey, American Journey, okay? Um, just like it sounds, American Journey. And they're made by Joe Miller of Cheap Joe's Art Stuff, and I order them from his website. If you don't have a Cheap Joe's near you, or I order them from Boone, North Carolina, because that's where the store started. But there's also a Cheap Joe's in Asheville. There's a Cheap Joe's in uh, 
Charlotte, which is where I live. But sometimes, you know, I don't even go there. I just pick up the phone or uh, I'll call one of the people there and I'll order them from there. And that's where I get mine. Um, they're good paints. They come in tubes like this. And I got to order some of this. This is why it's laying out here. This is sap green, one of my favorite greens. Somebody's asking me what greens I like. I like sap green. I like olive green. I like a good verdant color. And sometimes I'll mix all three greens together just in a little different section and have some fun with that. I'm going to pick up some of this yellow paint that just globbed out there because it wasn't supposed to glob that much. One of the things, if you paint like this, you're going to get paint all over you. I wore a black shirt today knowing that I was going to paint a little messy. So uh, let me show you what I do here. Grace, you got that. Great. Um, and thank you for jumping on board today. And yes, uh, Terry Tardy, 10 days to figure out what's next. I got to hap happen on this. Okay. Um, doo -doo -doo. no kidding. Uh, la, 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 la. Amy Beth. Hello from you. Jack Wolfbarger. Good morning, my man. And Jan Beckin. Thank y'all for saying hello so much and jumping on. I appreciate it very much. I'll keep jumping back and saying hello to some of you. It really is important. Thank you for sharing my page. Thank you for letting people know that I'm out there. That's been fun during this time for all the people that have jumped on board. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Take a, take a note, okay? I'm going to go in here with my brush. All right. Remember, I've only used the paint that I put on there out of these three bottles, and this is liquid watercolor. This is liquid watercolor, and they're about 8 or $9 a bottle, but you know what? I've had them for a long time. And are they messy? Golly, yes, they're messy. Okay, but that's what all this is about. Just get into your work sometimes. But what I'm trying to do is get it off my hands a little bit so that I don't get it on the rest of the paper here. I was talking and starting music and it switched gears on you. When I laid it over to the side, I got it all over me. So it's part of it. It's live internet. I started to say live TV, but I had enough of that in the years past. Okay. All right, let me see if I can find another paper towel here that's not taken up. All right, John, turn it down just a little bit. I'm talking. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. Remember, I have not used these paints. I told you about them, but I'm going to set them way over the side here, push my paintings around a little bit, move things around so I can see, take a sip of tea, and finish this rooster. All right, here's what happens. I'm going to pick up on, on my bamboo brush wet and just with a little bit of liquid in it just barely touch it here i'm going to pick up some i'm going to pick up a little red in there by just rolling my brush right in this red right here just rolling it in there very gently then i'm gonna go up here and i'm gonna pick up a little bit of this yellow right here and look what's happening i'm making some orange right could pick up a little of this right here and i'm going to come in and let that be the color of my legs so what i've done is i've used my painting as my palette this morning so here's what happens. You get paints that really work together because they were made from one another instead of introducing another color, which sometimes artists will do. And sometimes I'll do it. I'll just throw a piece of turquoise in there, like having that one feather that's just weird. You're going like, where'd that feather come from? And I go, I liked it because it just made me sort of like, I don't know, it made me jump back to the 70s. You know, I'm going to go right here and just get a little piece of turquoise. And I'm going to throw it right up there like that. Maybe a piece right in there. Boom. Okay. I just like that look. All right, now, there's a pen here somewhere that I'm looking for. Um, and, and what I'm going to do for black in this painting this morning is use my Lamy pen, which has a Lamy, uh, it may have a Lamy refill in it. It may have Parker House. I'm not sure what I put in here. Is it Parker? Parker, Parker somebody. It's not Parker House. That's the roll company. Maybe I'm just hungry. <laughs> hey, who knows what I say when I'm doing this, okay? All right. All right, so now I'm going to just put a little bit of lines in here. I did some with my 07 pen, the Pentel Energel pen that I write with, but I'm now putting in a fine line flare, and I'm going to go under this foot with just some cross hatching like this, because that's just how I decided to make the earth. You know, everybody, I, I, here's what I can't do in my style. I can't sit there and go, I've got to do grass one little sprig at a time. Nah, when I look outside, I don't see the sprigs when I'm this far away, okay? So... For me, I uh, I just want to bl blast it in there. And that's kind of why I use bamboo brushes. They hold lots of water. They hold lots of paint. They help me just be loose. Even before I put any paint in there at all, watch. I'm just going to take this brush 
and zip it across. And I'm going to get a nice little shadow there, okay? That works great from those pins. The pins bleed, remember? Okay, that's why I like to use ink in my watercolor. It just highlights some of the things that I'm doing. This is for illustrative or whimsical art. This is not for still life. You don't see a black marker around the apples and the bananas that you're painting. I'm, I love that sort of painting. That's just not my style. That's not what I do. You have to find your own voice in painting, okay? So I want you to be working on what your voice is. What is, what is the one thing that you really love to paint, that you love? It's not it's not gripped from somebody else. It's not like, oh, I'm going to learn to paint roosters because he paints roosters. I don't care if you paint roosters. You may love roosters. Somebody does because mine hang in a lot of homes, and I am so grateful for that. But my point is, what do you really love? Then start drawing it. Okay, Skeeter's been drawing a Skeeter, and Skeeter... When I say Skeeter, I mean like a little mosquito. And Skeeter, you need to draw 150 or 200 of those little things until it becomes natural. Until when you find yourself sitting in a restaurant and you find yourself holding the napkin, sipping your lunch, and you say, oh, yeah, I got to draw this little, uh, today I got to draw this little mosquito here. You know, I got to, I got to. And you find yourself drawing mosquitoes that have these really wicked little legs. They all come down like this and everybody's going out and, and so you find yourself drawing the mosquitoes. And you go, there, there's one right there. And what, what's he eating? He's eating a, uh, uh, a rotten tomato. I don't know what he's eating. And so, you know, so anyway, you see my point, though? Over and over and over and over. And is that what I've done with roosters? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. All right, I need a little bit of green in here for the grass. So I'm going to go in and pick up some of this blue-yellow right here. Roll my brush in that. Pick up a little bit of this. See if I can go in there and just get a little shade of green. I need some green in here. There it is. It's coming through right there. Just using my painting as the actual palette. That's kind of one of the most fun things to create is to say, don't go back to the well. Just see what you got. And look, here's my grass right here. Just a little, just, just flipping this little brush a little bit, just like that. And then I'm going to come in with a black pen, which is allowed in my three colors. And then I'm going to just get some of these marks, and I'm going to just put some marks in here like this. I'm going to put a little, there's his eye. Uh, looks a little, if you can see his eye right here. Let me see if I can hold this up and you can see it. Okay. He's got a little bit of an eyebrow, like a sad clown, like, oh, no. Uh, and so this, this reminds me of a painting that I do sometimes that my mother used to say about my brother. She would say, Charlie would argue with the fence post. Then she would say, but I tell you, he would win. Finally, she's saying the fence post would finally just give up. And so, uh, um, sometimes I like to do a little peep in my drawings. It's just sort of telling other people what's going on. All right, so then we're just going to put a little this. I'll do my peeps. I just sort of throw them in there real fast. I think that one's up in my head, and you can't see it, but there it is right there. I just kind of leave a little, leave some space. Let the painting breathe. If you're painting in Australia, leave a holiday. Don't fill everything in, okay? This fence post. What am I going to do to this fence post? There's a little orange right there that I used on the legs. I'm going to put some of that in there. I need a little color to do his beak. His beak is a little darker. There we go. There it is. Oh, that's perfect. Maybe a touch, touch more dark would help. Sometimes when you put that red and or, There we go. A little. And then maybe a little dark blue up in here that might turn. Oh, I like that. Okay. Even if I didn't like it, would I tell you? I doubt it. All right. I need to get some of this and just let the fence post. Look at that. Right in here where this purple and green and a little red have come together, I'm getting myself a nice little dirty brown. That's going to be my fence post color. There it is right there. All right. So, <laughs> Hartford. Oh, my gosh. I, I tell you what. His music has made me laugh for many, many years. Um. Uh, he loved steamboats, had his riverboat license, and he would travel up and down the Ohio River. And um, 
actually play his fiddle and drive the riverboat. And people go, man, that guy can fiddle. And they go, should, it's John Harford. And they go, what? John Harford is the pilot? He was the pilot of the riverboat, had his riverboat pilot's license. Don't you love that? Now, I come in with my black pen here and just put in some little detail in this fence post, maybe a knot hole right there. See how that's coming to life? Look at that, okay? And, and then maybe a couple nails right here. And then maybe a nail bent over. There's one there. There's one on that side. And this, look at this. Watch this. Go around the post this way. Around again. Maybe down like here. A little piece of barbed wire hanging over. Old fencing there. Uh, could I get a small brush and come in with a little bit of brownish color? We'll show some rust on the barbed wire. Yeah, you know, what I need is I need a pen working here with just some black. There it goes. Use this fountain pen to kind of come in and get a little black in these corners right here. And then just put a little bit of grass in there too. All right. The thing about using a fountain pen with color is that every now and then you're going to flood the, the tip. So you're going to have to clean it out a little bit. You have to do a little maintenance on your pens. Um, let me get this big brush and just go up in here. Get some clean water. Just put some clean water in there like so. Um, see if I can pick up some of this blue from the feathers. There we go. Look, just taking it right in here. Just laying my brush in there, damp brush, picking up some of this. Getting a little sky color in there. Just let it, let it, let it fade in a little bit. Don't overwork the sky. You don't have to. Everything doesn't have to be like every little piece of the paper doesn't have to be painted. Let your paintings breathe. Be loose. Be, especially if you're going to be illustrative, okay? All right, so there's a, there's a 9 by 12 painting that I did in about, by the time I started, about 20 minutes, um, and um, gives you an idea of how you can do this by just letting three colors be everything, okay? I did not use this at all. So every time you need a different color, don't feel like you've got to go grab that color from the tube and spend a lot of money, all right? Good morning, Cindy. Welcome to the show. I haven't seen your name before. Uh, Aldiz, I've saw you before, but Cindy, welcome. Maybe I've just missed you, but glad to have you aboard. Wanda Gross, good morning. Just found you this morning. Ta-da-da! Boom. You are so welcome to be here. Uh, and and uh, next time you go visit your crazy cousin, Christy, that's a lot. Of, I put crazy in there. Sorry. Just read that out, out loud like that, didn't I? Sue Ashton, Toronto, Canada. Ah, oh, yes. Thank you for joining me, eh? I had to say it, right? I'm, I'm just that kind of guy. Um, Suzanne Walters, thank you. From And uh, Robin, uh, Randall, Jane. Uh, Jane is the B person. Jane, I got a B coming up. I got to repaint my B. This one is wearing out, so I'm going to paint another B this morning. Look at him. I had him for 90. Well, I've had him more than that, but today is day 90. I've been painting for 90 days. Oh, my gosh. I'm a crazy person. Michelle Swanson, enjoy your artistry. Where are you from? You love the accent. Well, honey, I'm from the South. <laughs> hey, actually, I grew up in East Tennessee, uh, just uh, about 40 minutes uh, out of the Smoky Mountains. Uh, you know, not far from uh, Gold Rush Junction, which became Silver Dollar City, which became Dollywood. Uh, Actually, walked past Dolly Parton one morning on the Kaz Walker show. I'd done a little song there with my guitar, and she was coming in the other way. And I went, that's Dolly Parton. I was a young man, and uh, well, she's got me by a couple years, but not many. But I went, oh, my gosh, I know who that is. All right. Thank you uh, for finding me this morning. Um, all right. So um, I like how you use your paints from your work as a palette. You know what, Grace? Thank you. And I'll tell you what, uh, 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 a Chinese artist taught me that by just allowing us to come in his studio one morning with three colors. He said, this is all you get. It's all there. Those are the three primaries. They teach you that in school. And then we think, oh, I got to go get one that's got 75 colors. That's just who we are. Look at me. I'm just covered with paint this morning. I'm going to drive my wife's car this morning somewhere and she's going to want my hands to be scrubbed before I grab her steering wheel. All right. All right. So Sherry, Sharon, Sherry, Sharon, I like that, okay? Um, your imagination can go wild at once being said. Yes, I love that. In fact, Sonia, welcome, welcome. Denise Albright, Edna De La Rins from the Philippines. Whoa, thank you. That's a long way. That's a big connection. 
Can you imagine the internet is just so amazing, isn't it? Wow. William Miller, thank you for being here. Wow, so many of you today. Thank you for joining me and thank you for liking the show. Let me know when uh, you like it. Just throw something up there. Um, and also 90 days into this. All right, so I'm going to let this drive for a second. I'm going to come back and I'm going to put a, a, a caption on it. I'm going to sign it right here in this corner. Rue Doodles. And then I'm going to put the little M. That's for me. That's Michael. And I'm going to put 20 there so you know it was painted in 2020. How could you forget this year for heaven? sakes okay what i'm gonna do right now is look at this i'm just taking my pen and i'm throwing some little bit of uh spots in here just to give a little bit of detail and i'm gonna throw some darkness here just maybe use this uh fountain pen get a little bit of shadow down here on this leg now watch this if i touch that with my bamboo brush i'll just let that fill in a little bit it'll soften up and that pen will bleed a little bit and give me some scratching around there which i kind of like i like uh I like messy paintings. Can you tell? It's a good thing too, isn't it? Clear out. Dad's coming out to argue. All right. There's my painting. This. <laughs> Clear out. Dad's coming out to argue. There's always that one child who's got it all down. They go, all right, dad's coming out. And uh, maybe, you know, he's, he's uh, setting everybody straight this morning. That's what happens. There's a bent nail. Uh, there's some. Uh... All right. Bingo. I'm going to throw that over to the side. I'll post that this morning for uh, a reasonable uh, fee. If somebody wants a 9 by 12 to go on the back of their door that uh, it, it hits home with. Here's that, where's that B? I wanted to do that little B this morning. I started on him. Um, and here's what I did to the B. Uh, Jane, I think you have a B something like this, if I'm not mistaken. I think you have one of the first Bs that I did that said he's loaded down and headed home. And this is that concept of that B. I was sitting here last night um, working on a couple of files, computer files, and uh, had this piece here and I started doodling. And I thought, wow, I saw this laying here. I thought, I need another B. So here we go. I think I sketched him with a fine tip flare, which I don't see laying here anymore, which is sad because I could probably use it at this point in time. Here's one right here. Okay. Uh, when I do one painting, I'm not just, that's nah, not true. I'm just messy all the time. So I almost told you a fib there. Um, <laughs> Brittany says, yep, that's your kids in the fun. Yeah. All right. So look at this. Um, I'm going to take that water I had and I'm just going to, uh, take this, uh, take this painting right here. This is just pen and I'm going to spray it. There we go. Something's already happening. It's softening those lines. Can you see that? Look what's happening to these lines right here. See how they're breaking up already? See how they look like they've been just stippled on? Okay. Now I'm just going to go get some colors of what this uh, B should be. B should be. And try to keep my hands off the painting a little bit as I can. So I think the B should be, uh, he's going to have a little bit of this orange, um, brown, yellow, rusty color in him. There it is right there. Too much. Let's go get a little more yellow and just go in with some yellow. There we go. Let the pen bleed in. Um, what's happening now is I'm putting water in there. This pen is bleeding. Okay. All right. I got to clean off one little thing on my palette. But a minute ago when I was doing the orchestra or when I was doing the Pepto-Bismol painting, put a little red up here, which I normally don't do. So I'm just cleaning my palette up a little bit. Okay. It's the messiest day I've had in 90 days. And I know I've been counting. All right, look at that. Just uh, that little sweep came through. Could I get some of that yellow out of the wing if I wanted to? But maybe we're looking through the sky there, okay? So then I want a little bit of uh, orange in here and some, some wonderful little uh, browns. Just touching my pen to this. All right. Now, I know his limbs are going to be dark, so I'm going to just go get some because their undercarriage is, uh, they're undercarriage. We were talking about that yesterday, like on the 57 Chevy, they're dark in there. And, and there's a little bit of a, 
a brown that juts out here on the wings too, just like that. Okay, the little muscle, the little fiber, I don't know what you call that thing that comes out there, but it's part of their membrane that sweeps out there and makes the bee able to stand up in a windstorm. Bees are fascinating. I'm telling you, man, they are, they are just amazing. All right. All right, so now what I would do is I'd probably just kind of come in with a little bit of blue and um, splatter this around a little bit like so. Just create some, uh, some action around the bee. Just splattering with a little bit of ultramarine blue, a very light, damp brush. Just laying my paint, laying my brush in this paint just like this, just the tip of it, and then hitting it on another pen to let it fly in some. And... Uh, And then I might just grab the spray bottle again and just dust him one time. Zip, zip. And just let it start to blow, blow out a little bit. Look, see how he's just loosening up? <laughs> and so, does it look messy? Does it look detailed? You know, the fun part is it's going to dry completely different than what it is now. And, um, and it's going to have some character. I might go in. I like this dark ink is running here. This is a little more... Um, yellow black than I wanted it. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to get some of this cool little brown right here. Just bring back some brown on his head right there. See? All right. I like that. And then I'm going to go here and get this. Hang on one second. Um, and then I'm going to go in here and just touch his eye a little bit with that. And maybe a little decent black down here. Maybe a stripe of black. This this pen, it bleeds so, so blue that it's causing some, uh, whoa, and that brush had black in it. Sometimes you just make a mistake. You just go, whoop, your head ran away with you on that one. All right. My gum tree canoe. The way you roll over the water so blue. All right. So that gives you a little quick idea of how I might paint a bee. And uh, I might go in later and put in a little detail. Um, you know, here's the thing. If you're painting a doodle bee in your journal and you want to represent those guys working so fast in the, in the flower garden that you have outside, put some little hair fibers down. Um, uh, he doesn't have to be perfect, folks. He just has to be um, cute enough for you to like, okay? Headed to 100, okay? Headed to 100, Roodoodles. And is this done? No, nah, maybe not. I might come back and I might throw a little yellow in there. Just a little splatter of yellow around here just to kind of pop some some of that in i might go and get just a touch of green like there's a flower down here in the foreground somewhere i might take this and blow it a little bit like that just give it a little splatter okay so what i wind up with is was abstract looking little bee that everybody knows what he's about you know where he's headed in fact i don't know where he's headed he's headed to 100 um that doesn't mean anything to uh, anybody who hasn't seen this show <laughs> So I kind of like that, okay? A little shading on his back there, and uh, he's going to fly, okay? All right, so there's the bee. All right, so I got a bee, big roux, and I got time for one more little splatter roux, and uh, here's where we're going with that today. So I felt a little abstract coming on today. There's, now I got paint all over me, so that's what I'm going to do, so... Uh, remember, th they are just roots that I just connect. I'm gonna use a big piece of paper. No, I'm gonna use. I'm not. I'm gonna use this. I, I laid out a painting this morning that I thought I wanted to paint, but I'll paint it later. It was a roux sitting in an Adirondack chair, and with uh, the peeps bringing him a, uh, a a block of ice. My son reminded me this morning of a painting I'd done, and I said, "Man, my air conditioning's out in upstairs. It is hot up here." So I had a little fan running over here. Next week, Whew. welcome to buying a new car, a new car for your house. Um, and this is a big old house I live in. Um, 
And so it's a big old air conditioning. So guess what? I'll be putting in a new air conditioning furnace heating system. Look, I'm going to have to go find some soap. And uh, so I was going to paint a roof sitting in an Adirondack chair with a cool drink and with the peeps rolling in a wagon with a new block of ice, this old-timey fan blowing over the block of ice. I'm going to finish this painting. I'm going to finish this painting. This painting is, is me. I'm hotter than the inside of a cow right now. All right, so here we go. I'm going to take a piece of this uh, mixed media paper right here. And I'm going to paint a little uh, abstract roof for you real quickly. And then I'm out of here this morning. And um, um, let's see. Any questions? Oh, you're all gone the way of bees and talking amongst yourself. Got still 11 bees. So it's bee stories. Yep. My dad uh, was a beekeeper. And uh, I, here's my story. And I'm sticking to it. I have his bee gloves here. I have his bee blower. Excuse me. Not his uh, uh, smoker. I have his uh, bee tools. I have his hive tool over there. He was a bee association, president of the bee association in the city we lived in. Uh, my, when I left school, when I, well, I, didn't, I didn't go to school, but uh, when I left Knoxville um, at age, oh, I think it was age 17 when I finally said, I'm done with this and, and I'm uh, 18. That final year, my dad put up 13,000 pounds of, of honey, 13,000 pounds, six and a half tons of honey. Uh, him and a friend, most of it by himself, and uh, it was selling then for about a buck and a half a pound. Can you imagine? Oh my gosh, what honey goes for today? He was sitting on a fortune. Most of it was sourwood, so it went it went for like two fifty a pound. So uh, he was a beekeeper and a half. He understood it. He loved bees. So all right, so here we go. Uh, going the opposite direction this morning. I always go right handed. I'm just going to drop some uh, water on the page like this. And then I'm just going to put a few colors in there. Let's do the same thing I did. Just if you don't have these colors, you can do the same thing with your palette of any colors that you have. I'm encouraging you today, maybe this weekend, just work on with three colors. Oh, red, white, and blue. That'd be fine too. Paper is the white, but work with at least a yellow and a blue and a red uh, in your painting. And that'll give you some, uh, some good, good paint to go with. Look at that. What happened? See that? See what happened there? I just put that paint down and it took off like a crazy thing. Okay. All right. All right. So what I do here is I just pick this up. Let's give it a blow like that. Give that one a little bit of a blow and you already see the rooster. He's there. It just happens. You just kind of learn to work in that direction. If you're a modeler of clay, Terry, you're a potter. You know that you're going to go this direction with the pot. Okay, you're just going to do that. And so, in this case, you've done just that with, uh, with, with the, uh, with the paint. So then I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to make the feathers come out of here. This is exactly like I just painted, except I'm using just water and colors out of my uh, paint. I'm going to pick up some of this red, bring it in here. And also that red will keep this from going completely yellow because I'm going to get a little more of a brown here for the underbelly of this. So I pick up the red and put it in with the yellow. And that's going to give me a great little leg color. Look at this. The leg's coming down. There's his foot right there, standing there. Look at that. Amazing. You already see this rooster. He's painted himself, okay? When I teach kids to paint like... Just use the word teach. I'm sorry. When I explain or show to kids how to paint like this, just to throw paint around and let it just kind of happen, they can't believe it. They go, oh my gosh, look, I see something in that. It's amazing. And I go, yep, happens every time, doesn't it? I think this is what God felt like when he made the earth. He's like, boom, 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 boom. And I just think had a field day of, uh, of creating. Was it... Uh, in Narnia, I think the magician's nephew, is that where Aslan is singing as he creates the earth? That's just one of my favorite pieces in the whole story. Um, just to throw paint around like that. Look at this room. Look at this. He's kind of reckless. He's kind of wild. He's kind of out there. What if I just uh, broke my own rule here, go in with this pen and put in some uh, a little detail. Watch what's happening with the pen. Can you see what's happening here? The paint is actually separating back from this also. Look, the paint's running from this ink. Okay, whatever's the last one you'll put on. There's this little eye right there. Big old beak on this rooster. Waddle. Waddle. 
Well, I'll be dipped. All right, time for me to get out of here. Turn off the fiddle player. I am gone. Let me splatter that and just let it be like it is. I'm going to splatter it with something completely different today. I'm just going to go get a little bit of orange over here. Go in and hit a few splatters. I'm also going to take a little bit of just lamp black and go in here and just put some spots in that color like so. <laughs> and just let it fade in. A little blue up in the sky like this. Hey, be safe uh, on the 4th of July. Uh, send someone a note today. Tell them you're thinking about them. Hey, we, you know what? We live in a great country. And uh, if you get tired of hearing that we don't, stop watching the news for a while and just call their friends and tell them that they are blessed. I actually am highly favored. I am highly favored. I'm highly favored that you guys watch this morning show and uh, that you're being creative, okay? So that makes me highly favored. And, and that's just one of the ways that I can count on it. So blessings to you. Have a happy 4th of July. Chances are I'm going to see you for a short show tomorrow morning. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping the shows, it'd just be a one camera show probably. I'm hoping it's going to come from one of my favorite donut places in the Southeast. It's called Status Dough. Status Dough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm thinking of sour cream donut. And a cup of coffee, not my tea, my coffee from there is going to be fantastic. So have a blessed 4th of July. And uh, uh, stumbled on this. And Starnes, thank you for jumping on in Charleston, South Carolina. And I was just in your fair city and I painted there for two days. Love that place. And Ohio says, hello, Lisa. Thank you. The spray bottle is magic. <laughs> I love that. You guys are so fun. I love your comments. Hey, be creative. Um, and, uh, thanks for liking the work. Thanks for letting me just be who I am. Cause if I try to be somebody else, Hey, don't dress your art up greater than it needs to be dressed up. Just have fun with it. Share it with friends. And, uh, I get to share mine. And sometimes, um, uh, who knows? I, I might sell, I might sell some more parades and pay for my air conditioning. Okay. Blessings to you all. I will see you. There's a harmonica here somewhere. I actually found it. I'm going to uh, shut this down. And uh, here it goes on a little note. <laughs>